All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the loser's bracket, which means things are a little more dire. We'll explain our thought process on this in a moment, because some people have been asking throughout the several groups getting into this why we do losers first. But before that, we need to give some shout-outs to the tournament sponsor, Ting. Without them, none of this would be possible. $5,000 strong coming in for this prize pool. We're almost at the round of 16. This is the last group to play for the round of 32. And, of course, once today's group is finished, we will have the full groups posted for the next part of the tournament but for now uh oh spawning here in the top right or top left excuse me it's gonna be team liquid's red protoss mana <laughs> and in the bottom right as the green terran he is lilikanin of course he's not staying in the bottom right no no he's not so mana's gonna be able to scout Whoa. this it's a three racks marine rush and half um, a rush i don't even know what to call it anymore what is this reflecting? Oh, I didn't even know what you were looking at. I was looking at the plate on the ground. It's like actually reflecting something. I thought it was see-through. Are you it... sure it's not just... Are you sure it's not see-through? I'm pretty sure it's, it's supposed to be reflecting whatever building would be like up here on the edge of the map or something. I don't know. That's weird. Uh, and well, Mana this scouts this though. Because, and again, this is the problem with the Lincolnine. Well, he's not a player who relies on gimmicks. He's a player who prefers gimmicks. And things like this get scouted all the time. You see this full wall off at the front? For Mana, the immediate red flag is, okay, he doesn't want me to see what's in his base. Well, normally it would be like three racks reaper inside the base. That's not the yeah. situation here. Yeah, it's a three racks marine rush. And I, I put rush because, of course, he has a racks back at home. Oh, that's not man. really rushing forward. Zombie grub. Mana, I think, What's did his up? homework because it was this sort of build right. that actually qualified Marine Lord, or sorry, Little Kinning through the qualifiers where he fought Lamu in a very silly yet oh, enticing Jesus. matchup. Now, Mana doesn't scout the cancel. He doesn't know that this has been abandoned. He might think, oh, he's still dedicated to this like a fool and I'm getting further and further ahead. But uh, he needs to confirm that now as he goes <laughs> back in for the scout. Seeing this, the, the cancel, though, I'll know that he's still pretty darn ahead, though. So whoa, this whoa, is. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> yeah, the response, I think, is actually an okay one. Like, he actually has to do something that is really extreme. You either throw down five rocks in your home base and hope he doesn't expect 50 Marines coming at him, or you throw down a double command center. Because playing standard, like, one racks and then, like, a couple more barracks, or, or like, one command center and a couple more barracks, like, that's not going to get you very far. So, of course, he's also picking up a lot of minerals. Um, so he has a lot to just throw down here. And this looks very awkward, and it's, it's probably not going to work, but I think the extreme... <laughs> follow-up option was the only way to go I, I i really like this like okay it's it's it looks ridiculous but you're, it's like it's probably the most calculated smart follow-up to uh to the failure but unfortunately this ooh, is was nice not expecting this mana i forgot was willing to do this it was mana who turned it up to 10 when he started losing macro games started doing a lot of proxy bs and started doing yeah. like dts and this started winning him a lot of games and Perhaps this is the shameful way to play Protoss that he was just trying to avoid it in the first place, but not in this series. He says, screw it. You were going to proxy Rax me? I'm going to hit you with some pylons. <laughs> this is just a really smart response. I'll get a Philly Canadian hat thrown down five Rax instead of two more command centers, and this might be laughable. Like, he'd have so many Marines. Yeah. But because he did go for an extra two command centers, this is just something that he has to deal with, and it, maybe he'll survive. And two command centers can really bring you back strong. But... No, no. The problem, the problem is Thank there's you. a bunker down, and he can just walk around it. Lily Canadian actually... His, his best bet might be trying to create a thicker wall off behind it, as silly as that sounds. Like, if he had his two command centers up here to the top left, so the soccer's going only walk through the bunker, like, then maybe that's a better hold position. But, uh, unfortunately, when there's enough stalkers, they can just walk past a bunker full of marines. Yeah, but Mana's not reinforcing, so a Lickening, I guess, is, is calling that, you know, too. It could have been wrong. There could have been more stalkers, and you probably would have been dead right now. But yeah, calling the bluff, so to like speak. Yeah, he's like, I don't think you're going to be uh, pushing past here. So, actually pushes forward. We'll take one of the stalkers down. The second stalker's pretty low already, too. Oh, you so, know, if he turns around, he gets that bad. mothership core before the overcharge pops. Nah, mm -hmm. not going to quite get it. The range on that's pretty long. Jesus. Yeah. All right, so Mana did get a Stargate and a Robotics uh, facility behind this. The Robo, not as important as the Oracle coming out right now, because, you know, I'm not sure Loki is going to have his Marines in place. Now, Mana doesn't have to sacrifice this Mothership Core. She could recall eventually, but well, it's, you know, it might be worth just remaking her. Yeah. Could also just fly it around, around the south, to be honest. There's not enough Marines here. He was not paying That's attention. That's true. But yeah. <laughs> the overcharge feels like almost 300 damage to the command center. That's a little annoying. That's a lot of damage. All right, so the game goes on, and it's a very funky game. But you know, we brought up doing his homework. I kind of, I, I was thinking about it during the break as I looked at the uh, the the bracket, 
And I don't know if Mana would have really done a lot of homework because he, of course, was preparing for other <laughs> matches uh, this past week. But that was a really just like instant I scouted this and then I scouted Ooh. the next thing and I knew exactly what to do. So either he did study and kudos to him for that. Or he just knows Lily Kanine, which I feel a lot of these pro gamers do. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not even a question. For Lily Kanine, he's known for a lot of his strange, ridiculous... But hell, it's why we love casting him. It's why when he's in the bracket, I'll be the first one to say, we should cast that Lily Kanine match. Because they're always entertaining yeah. games. And they do actually work from time to time against players you would never expect them to work against. So, right. you guys have to understand, like, Lily Kanine being in this group, I was super hyped for. It was a little bit of a sad start to this game, and it was a bad series versus Marine Lord, certainly. But I still... I'm looking forward to any time we see him. So what's funny is that I do, you know, TLO lost to Lily Kanine once with that uh, that three racks proxy, remember? Oh, the ghost um, rush, too. That's what it was. Yeah, the ghost rush. And then he almost lost, that's right, uh, on Dusk Towers versus the, uh, the, the Marine Rush. And then Snoot an handled it perfectly afterwards because he saw TLO, you know, and it's like, I know exactly what he was going to do. Um, but anyways, I was, I was bringing it up because TLO actually, I responded to someone in chat and he didn't want to be BM and I'm pretty sure it was Lily Kanine. He was like, I actually don't face him that often on ladder because he's not at my MMR. So I always wondered if that was the reason we see these these players actually go down and if that would have affected any of these series <laughs> like... today is that they actually don't face him that often and they're like, huh, I didn't realize I would hit at that time, you know? <laughs> Well, the funny thing is, it would be the population of EU that makes that possible, whereas you've got the contrast rough in North America, and everybody's played against rough, because it's, it's actually like 200 less people play on the ladder, so there wouldn't <laughs> be that difference in MMR, which is kind of funny. So, you know, you see it every time we cast rough, he gets shut down, but Lily Kanine doesn't. That might actually be just the disparity of, like, the population <laughs> of the servers. I've never really thought about it until just this moment. <laughs> yeah, I never thought about it either. Um... Of course, Ruff being, yeah, kind of like the North American version of Lucanin. A lot of same builds, a lot of similar gimmicks, but <clears throat> Mana is starting an attack, you know, there was kind of that lull point where oh, maybe Lucanin is like, too. maybe I could bring this back, but that is a lot of units. Yeah, I mean, again, for Lucanin, a lot of these, the, these, the drawn out portion of this looks a little bit silly, like, you know, if this is your first time ever seeing the player, you're like, this guy has no idea how to play Terran, but it is off the back end of constant failed attempts to cheese, so... I mean, you can only expect so much. Even the best players in the game can hardly ever recover from those situations. I mean, you constantly hear Zerg players talk about how drone scouting isn't worth it because of one drone loss in the early game. Imagine trying to proxy racks who's have to cancel both and two SCVs being gone, right? Like, there's just... <laughs> well, it's not the same level. It's that same concept where you are going to put yourself behind if it doesn't work. Now, uh, unfortunately, this base, while the command center lives, a lot of SCVs die. The Warp Prism is slowly being taken care of here. Um, gonna actually be driven back, but he wins the fight at the third. Command center gets lifted. Marauders are taken care of, and Lily Kanine's left with half the army supply of his opponent. The most oh depressing part is one one or sorry, level one weapons finishes after the army that could use it dies. Yeah, yeah. you know, I, GG. Yeah, GG. Um, I could have seen a game where Lily Kanine had everything covered: missile turrets of the natural, entire army at the third base with a bunker. I could see Mana over dedicating, thinking that he had like this huge lead because well he did, but I could actually see him being a little too confident and uh, throwing away that lead, but that obviously didn't happen. And we go on to Lairlac. Okay, I like Lairlac because I don't have a map intro for this, so I can uh, kind of relax as we get into the lobby. Uh, Lairlac is another map too, by the way, where I wouldn't say proxies are out of the question. Like somebody li Lily can need to me. Well, I don't envision. You, you sit down and close your eyes and think about what could he do. You don't necessarily think of it like a three racks with Marines. You think more about things like Hellion drops and elevator play and things like that. Um, would be certainly cool to see. But it is worth noting. We do need to actually put this out there. Lily Kinney can play a pretty decent macro game in the right situations. Like he's not. This is not a player who, again, he, he he's going for a lot of gimmicks today. But he's not someone who relies on them 100% of the time. But he's, uh, he is uh... down one going into game two. Yeah. We are sadly seeing him uh, down one, but hopefully it doesn't affect his mentality too much. Spawning him in the top right side of Lyrilac Crest, it's going to be the green Terran player in question, Lily Kanin. In the bottom right, as the red Kurdos, he is Mana. So there's two points to cover, because we didn't get to go into that first game, like I said. And a lot of people have been asking, like, why we insist on doing the losers match first. There's honestly about 50 things you could dissect from this. You know, the, the fact is that like if you do it this way, you get a winner and a winner back to back. So the end of the group ends more positive. Uh, for us, though, it's it's more enticing to 
Like once someone, I think once you see somebody get out of the group, you kind of formulate your automatic. Okay, I know how the rest of the blocks are coming to play. And for us, that's not fun. We want to actually have like that, that, that tense. Like, okay, who's actually going to get out? That lasts as long as possible. The other benefit to this, and this wasn't actually the intention of why we did it, but we found out it was like a cause and effect thing, was this actually lets the loser off the hook. If you are somebody who is severely outmatched in the group and you're just going to lose anyways, you don't have to wait around an hour to lose, depressingly. And we've actually had that happen in the past a couple times for other tournaments we've cast. So this ended up being just a really, I think, efficient way to play the group out. I know a lot of people prefer doing winners second because then you get to mm. follow the hype train of who won. But I actually like having the hype train be at the end of the group because it's consistent. You, you get the winner into another winner and then the group's finished. I think the one thing that sucks about this, though, is that whoever goes second in the, the beginning matches goes right into another match, you know, having just lost. Right. They don't so, get time to, like, recoup and... Be like, yeah, okay, that's kind of like the, the potential spiral down on some of the uh, players that have, you know, that have more trouble with their mindset. You know, Mana, he got time to kind of chill chill and whatnot. Not that much time, mind you, because, well, Lillian was 3-0'd. But Lily Kaneen was literally 3-0'd, and then he might be going down 2-0, and then, like, are you going to come back down from being 5-0? Like, I don't... That's a lot tougher than uh, even being down two. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> unfortunately, Mana does lose his pro pretty quick, so not uh, the best start for him. But of course, we check his vision and see that he did scout Lily mm -hmm. Because part of that scout was, of course, seeing the uh, command center. And oh, it still works. That's right. We yeah. fixed the mod Our recently, visions. guys. You can use the graph still after we check the vision, which is great. Still constantly tweaking this. I wish I had the smarts of somebody who, who did this, that I could work on this 24-7. Uh, luckily, we've got a friend who, in his spare time, has been helping us with this mod to keep improving it. I love the graphs. Uh, oops, sorry. As we've got several different ones, we really do only use the income advantage. But quick reminder that we can look at the APM as well as the army size over the last 10 minutes mm. of the game. But Mana coming from round two of this bust. If the bunker was done, this wouldn't be an issue. But unfortunately, it's not, oh. and it will be a problem. I do want to note that Lily King went for a regular build. Yes. <laughs> uh, so what he's doing now is actually just slightly differing it, but not in a way that is so, like, it's gimmicky, right? Like, it's actually just a nice little change up where he's getting a Marauder slow first. Cancel, 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 Definitely cancel. cancel that one. Ooh, well, that's odd. Um, but yeah, getting Marauder slow, it's going to be, you know, it's actually going to catch units. You'll be able to chase down units as well. So if this was two Stalkers, for instance, there's no way they're leaving if Marauder taps them. But it is only the Adept and Pylons, which obviously slow isn't too helpful for. He could have also been planning for an attack. You know, Lilikanin is that type of guy for sure. To see other Terrans too go for just, like, I have this many units. Let me attack you. And that just surprises the Furdos, you know? They're just like, what the hell? What are you doing? And that might have been what he was going for, but unfortunately he has to deal with this first. Uh, what's kind of funny is the barracks said it's been a different spawn location would have actually lost the reactor to this. Losing the barracks, you just lift it up and fly it back later afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, SCVs have been getting uh, away with mining uh, with the natural, which is a little funky. And the mules! They're all the mules! Well, he just pulled them from the depth, so maybe not looking right away. No. I was going to okay. say, the reason he lost that bunker, by the way, was because he was microing his Reaper on the other side of the map, which unfortunately is no longer uh, around. Ooh, one health. One health hype. Please! Okay, there you go. Uh, just a quick, quickly comment on the audio here. This is strange. Maybe it's because my ears are plugged up today, but Zomgrub's mic sounds perfectly fine, like totally normal to me. So I don't know why it would be coming across the stream any differently. So I if, 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 just this, I guess this is the general question in the chat. Like, is the mic sound weird to you guys? Because maybe I've got some audio thing tied up on my end wrong, but she sounds good to me. Uh, at any rate, Lil Kaneen... Pushing up this ramp, not going to happen without medevac support, not without high ground vision. He's trying to, of course, bait some overcharges, but that's not happening. Mana's not playing into the game, so he's going to lose some sentries for it. Uh, a little bit curious why he's so hesitant to pop an overcharge. Yeah, that seemed a little too hesitant. <laughs> I mean, two, two sentries going down for that is just like, okay, maybe the 50 energy would have been worth it, but... Yeah. Thing is, is that with an attack like this, you know, you, you know there's not going to be a follow-up of uh, Medivax too soon. Because he got into the base without a depth and saw everything. So even if Lily Kanin didn't take his time getting to a factory, which only just went down now, it still would have been delayed Medivax, and you wouldn't have needed that 50 energy, like, you know, totally after Lule. So I, I don't know, that was, that was odd. Um, now it's not the factory, but also, like, two barracks, which is never really ideal. Uh, you'd want to have, like, Starport hopefully already getting that reactor on before that. 
or third base. Lucanine obviously going for that two base for now. Might just stick on two base and try and win the game with it, but uh, Mana's already doing such a good job in this game. Those sentries aside. Yeah, I mean, the Immortals are going to be great. They're way better than they used to be. I know you and I had some debate about this when uh, we first saw the changes. and Just curiosity to see how it would play out. But that barrier ability has been just fantastic when fighting all kinds of units. I still think there's a lot of situations where the old Hardened Shield's way better. But when you are fighting Bio, Hydra's, Lings, this new barrier ability is seriously amazing. Mm-hmm. Well, we have Mana pushing out here. Doesn't have too many gateways, only on three with two more on the way. Resonating Glaives is only, it's not even halfway done, so I don't know how much he's really going to commit to this attack. I think it's more just to scare him, and then maybe if he sees he's not taking it seriously, once Resonating Glaives is done, go for the push. I mean, but until that, I think you gotta stay out here. It is a pretty stark oh, army go for lead it. for Mana coming into this. <laughs> I mean, I think the army would have wanted that Resonating Glaives, just usually if you are going to get the upgrade, you're going to want to wait for it to finish, but yeah, it SVs, doesn't wait for it. The SVs having not been pre-pulled means they couldn't soak his for the bio, they weren't preparing the bunker. All of Lily Kinnean's army actually just straight oh, up dies. Missile turret hype? Missile turret hype, going to take out the oh, war oh prism, but not before the entire army dies, so... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, kudos to you, young sir, but you're still dead. <laughs> GG. GG. All right, well, as you pointed out, down 0-5 now in total maps today, but 0-2 versus Mana. This puts a look at you know, what is possibly his last life as we go into game number three. What is, uh, what is the map? Ruins. Ruins. Thank you, Sir Nerner, by the way, for the 10-month resub. And again, apologies to anybody who are missing on the subs today. I'm not going to lie. My game is totally off. This is taking everything to focus <laughs> so i'm missing some small things here and there but thank you guys for putting up with the, the broadcast in the meantime oh no the mic was muted panic uh, yeah you guys my mic was muted that's how you heard me ask the question <laughs> <laughs> nice try chat you bunch of trolls i like rechat by the way we miss a lot in chat like you guys have to understand when, when zavriam and i mention something that's said in chat it's usually because we glanced over it for like a second right but we missed ninety nine percent of everything in chat, and that rechat function has been pretty cool to go back and like rewatch and see mm -hmm. some of the stuff we've been missing through VODs. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ruins of Ceres coming up next. We'll see you guys in just a moment. All right, we're gonna have to uh, put a ban issue there on Juga Juga One in chat. It says uh, guys starting next game or after commercials. Let's just start telling Ripken he's muted. Sir, that is not Dude. okay. <laughs> I've had too many problems with being muted during the Ting Open, and uh, I'm, I'm being like super extra precocious about this now. Uh, at any rate, welcome back. We are getting into game number three here in the losers match. That sad reminder that whoever loses this uh, the series will be out of the tournament for good. Whoever wins will have a chance to fight against the loser of the winners match, which of course is Nurture and Marine Lord coming up next. But uh, for now, he is on his last life. He's still fighting, and he's not out of it just yet. In the bottom right, we've got the green Terran, Lily Kinnean. In the bottom left, we have the red Protoss, Liquid Mana. Now, Mana is playing rather abrasive. I think it's probably the best way I can describe this. Like, the double pylon right up against the ledge. Um, it's funny, because I'm going to reference Marine Lord, who's on the other side of the group. We saw him start doing a lot of these weird builds versus Protoss, where you would actually not put the barracks here, but instead put a bunker there blindly, almost most matches versus Protoss. Uh -huh. I think a lot of that had to do with the pylons. Alternatively, after that started being the default, we started seeing him and many others start putting it at the bottom of the ramp. Because again, the idea isn't that you need to save your natural base, you just need to protect the ramp in the early game. Once you've reached that point where you've driven off the pylons, there's no chance for Mana to pull that off, you're kind of good to go. So mm. it's something where Lily Kinnean could certainly be playing better. I mean, he tried to put the bunker down last time. It's not like he wasn't thinking about it at all. But it is also, you know, credit to Mana taking advantage of an opening when he sees it. Yeah. Uh, definitely. Now we see uh, Mana finally getting the scout here. Uh, the SCV oh, is a little... Yeah, I feel like he's in a proxy of Starport. Yeah. He gets a second barracks and a factory at home, and the factory will be revealed if Mana just goes up the ramp. Uh, actually, it's going to swap over to make Hellions, which is interesting. I mean, I really, I really would have liked Lee Kinnean going for one base build against 
you know, mana all three games, actually, as we've seen a lot of success with them. Yes. Uh, and there's different variations yes. of them, too. But he did hold off, and this isn't even exactly what I was thinking of. You know, it was something we saw from Ryung and whatnot. This is his own variation, which is... Oh, I guess I forgot what Woodmines can react to now. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's early to anticipate Hellions. The Woodmines are hilarious. Mana scouting, of course, for proxies, because it's a little canine. And uh, this is just oh, a safe well. thing to do anyways. Oh, oh! Doesn't, doesn't get it. Um, but this is kind of cute because Widow Mines are still very much a problem for Protoss. To the point where you can yeah. almost walk this across the map instead of drop them. And it's still the same level of an issue. Now this gets revealed and the medevac is going to come out either way. Bring the starport back home afterwards. But this does kind of make you wonder how much can he get away with. Now Mon, I don't believe, side of the Widow Mines. He's still going for so, an observer nonetheless. He was going to Widow hope. Mine drop. But proxy the medevac? He's supposed to walk his what of mine's over. Uh, well, Lilikini, if you remember, he's done follow-ups this where he throws in the tech lab or liberator afterwards, and he's going for yeah. liberator this time. So the, the proxy still makes sense, but it is... You know, the, the, the thing about these what of mines, I, I would worry less about killing probes with them and more about just using them to sort of safeguard the liberator. But Mana's put really great pylon positioning down, and I can't see that liberator actually getting too much done. I, yeah, um, the Observer's gonna pop out here, and if there was a reaction, then it'd be cleaned up really easily, but oh my oh, god. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, huh. what am I, they get cleaned up thanks to the Observer, but 10 kills, there's still 10 kills, we got a Hellion running around here, not gonna get too much done. Uh, 11 kills at the end of the day, with the Liberator coming up next, that Mothership Core is gonna have enough energy to overcharge, so this Liberator shouldn't have too much follow-up to it. Well, I, uh, you... I like the idea. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, you brought up the, the idea of one base builds, and he's still kind of sticking on this. I I, yeah. I mean, it's not the one base builds we've been seeing out of, like, the Koreans, for example, but still one base does have a lot of right, strengths. Right, right. So, we saw a similar build from, like, TY on this map in the uh, vertical spawns. It, I think the, the actual, like, the proxy wasn't around, that's for sure. And then the order of buildings wasn't like this, but it's, it's the same idea, regardless. Like, you wouldn't mind drop into a liberator harassment, into a follow-up push, that hopefully all of this is just so much for them to deal with. You know, maybe they deal okay with the Widow Mines, but not so great with the liberators, and maybe they deal okay with both, but then they don't anticipate a full frontal attack because you've cleaned up their scouting, which uh, unfortunately can has not. This probe has been here forever, seeing the lack of a natural. Yeah, and that, that actually, it's funny you bring that up because that is a good point. Like, you could build a command center in the main, sure, but it's the fact that it's still not down mining that's worth the scout. Now, the tank follow-up this, the Marines, like, this is something that I think in the past was a significantly dangerous composition for a Protoss player to worry about. But there's Immortals on the way, there's going to be an Overcharge or two with pilots to stall out by time. I just, I can't see this going too poorly for Mana as long as he, he plays his cards right. It's it's less about the fact that Lily is going to snowball with an army supply. Like, this isn't, this isn't like Roach Ravager, right, where you're coming in with double the army supply and brute forcing. This is still going to take some finesse. Oh, for sure. This is... I mean, if you can find a beast of position on, like, a ledge or whatnot, tanks can be really, really great addition to your army, but it is about that positioning and actually utilizing them correctly. You can't just stim and win, even though he does have stim. So the Starport is actually under fire. Uh, Stalkers do leave it alone, but it's... it's Unless he calls on a mule, it's going to burn down. I think he would have loved to uh, keep reinforcing with liberators with that. There's the no army tries to get it uh, a head start here, not let him uh, on those ledges that I was talking about by pushing out and meeting him here. But it might not be the best choice for Mana. Uh, it does go around and set up with the Liberators. This takes uh... the Stalker's attention away, but the tanks, unfortunately, were already on the front lines, already in range of the Immortals before they even got to fight. Stim's not going to cut it in Lily Kanine. This is bleeding out army supply way too fast. He had some SCVs on the front lines to repair, which was kind of cute, but that just... That plop not... flailed. Yeah, not what you wanted from that. Uh, it, there was no, you know, that one Widow Mine got a good hit, but it wasn't something that made Mana lose focus, you know? Like, he didn't start, like, tumbling down and, and didn't realize what was going to happen next. He had constant scouting. That probe is still there, by the way. So he knew to anticipate a follow-up attack. I think ever <laughs> since TY used it, like, weeks ago, this has become more popular, and Protosses have also just realized what's happening. So <sighs> it's, it's kind of like... Uh, a very fun build uh, that's a little bit too late. And it just was something that he knew to deal with. So all around, Mana was prepared. 
and that's pretty important. If you're prepared, but you're not, like, you know, experienced with it, you can just falter as you defend too much, you know? You get stuck in your main, or your natural, and then the siege tanks slowly crawl up, they keep reinforcing. And they actually snowball like that, but if you meet them head-on, if you can meet them head-on, then uh, it goes better. I have something stuck in my throat like a frog or something. <laughs> God. <laughs> Uh, uh, I'm at this point where this I'm, probably, great. <laughs> I'm better off just muting my mic and just letting you cast at this point. Sorry. Uh, more SCVs were brought with this. Not so much to pull the boys, but so much just to repair. But again, put them on the front lines to soak some hits might not be too bad. That's a lot of tanks to shuffle around. Oh boy. I managed um, to mute my mic for that one, so that was cool. It's one in seven. Uh, <laughs> Good job. The tanks, though, really just. Range is great. The problem is the Warp Prism is actually probably going to outmaneuver this. And he could actually just take them across the map instead of defending if he wants. But I think a flank from behind with the Immortals, high ground vision up here, Lily Kanine. He's got to have that medevac in position or he'll have none. I mean, Mana not underestimating the situation. I think he's fully aware that this is still a dangerous push that could win the game if he takes a good fight. But not too worried about it because he is setting it from behind. Uh, I'd actually I would love to see a Warp of a Depths come in just to force the tanks to fire in different directions. But... Truth be told, while well, we got a lot of focus on the tanks, it's the bio count that is quite scary. Yeah, these are uh, fully upgraded with stim and combat shields, so they are no joke. The War Prism in the back does something here, tries to take out a tank, but the Immortal ends up going down, but it's probably enough on the front lines to go ahead and clean this up. And Lily Kanine, yeah. unfortunately, this is his last life. GG. Congratulations to Mana. He'll take another 3-0 as we speed through this group, and he will go on to fight against the finals of the group. Yes, uh -huh. the decider. Okay, so, uh, guys, I, I, I'm I, just going to send us off to the ad break here. I don't have a lot I can really say. I'm dying. i got to go and be right back. So enjoy this commercial about the devices on Ting. 80% of devices are compatible with Ting. Made within the last two years. <laughs> I'm dying. We'll see you guys soon.